Greetings and welcome back to room 303 in Freshman English. And we turn in your hymnals now to page 1111 as we are now going to finish our study of the Odyssey as it's related to us in our anthology with Penelope's test and then finally the very end of the Odyssey. Okay, so here's the thing. Odysseus has been gone for 20 years. Ten at the walls of Troy. He helped Troy to fall and the Greeks to win by inventing that idea of the horse. Let's go ahead and put it in our notes. They have a word for the Trojan horse. It's called cheating. It's lying. In other words, it's bending the rules. The Trojans thought they had won the war. No, Odysseus and his men are inside of the horse that they push inside the city. And the reason they push it inside the city is because a Greek was left behind who lies and says the Greeks all went home and this is their good luck charm. And the Trojans push the good luck charm inside of the city. And then all the Greeks turn around and come back under cover of night. They don't even do this at daytime. And then while those poor Trojans are having a good time partying, they get slaughtered. Wait a minute. That sounds very similar to the end of the Odyssey, where Odysseus shows up, dressed as an old man incognito, gets Telemachus to take away all of the weapons, and then slaughters every one of them. In other words, we have a similar game being played. Number two, in his journeys away from his wife Penelope and his son Telemachus, Odysseus has had the comfort of at least a couple of drop-dead gorgeous women. One of them is the witch Circe, and the other is, of course, Calypso, who he has been with for a number of years on her island, right? So much so that when Hermes comes and, in fact, tells Calypso, you have to let Odysseus go, she says, I am not interested in letting him go. The man is enjoyable to me. You can figure out what that means. That has been Odysseus. Can we say it? He has enjoyed the company, dare we say it, conquest of a couple of really beautiful, and we should say powerful women. By the way, just to remind, Athena, the goddess, has been with Odysseus all the way. She is, in fact, the reason that he's able to come back home and jack all the suitor bad guys. Number three, Odysseus takes care of all of the bad guys. One of the first things that he does after he cleanses or purchases his house is to round up all of the servant girls who were forced to sleep with these suitors. They've had to clean up all the blood because it's a, it's a slaughter in the, in the main room. And then once they've done it, Odysseus has them taken out and routinely hanged, every one of them executed. Why? Because they messed around with the men, sexually. Then... Odysseus will call to have his wife Penelope to be reunited with him. Three things we'll say before we read. One, Penelope has no idea what's been going on downstairs because she's been put in a sleep. When she actually wakes up and the nurse says, your husband has returned, Penelope slaps her across the face and says, don't even tell me a lie. To which, no, it's true. Number two, Penelope is a lot like Odysseus. She is naturally distrusting. It's been 20 years since her man was gone, so Penelope then will say, how do I know it's you? Finally, number three, and we're going to get to how, how that one is known. Number three. The third thing will be the fascinating one. Early on, Odysseus will ask Penelope whether she's messed around on him or not, because he says, I'd kill you if you did. But Odysseus will admit to his sexual exploits that is to say, for our notes, this is what we call the sexual double standard, okay? In other words, Odysseus can do it and get away with it because he is Odysseus and by extension, obviously, male. Penelope cannot mess around because she is, of course, Odysseus' wife and she is a female. So as we get into this reading on page 1111 right away, we are going to have Penelope's famous test. How do I know it's you? And Odysseus' response is a famous one. So let's read quickly, we'll annotate, and then we'll come back to make our final comments. Penelope's test. Penelope tests Odysseus to prove that he really is her husband. Great-hearted Odysseus, home at last, was being bathed now by your enemy and rubbed with golden oil and clothed again in a fresh tunic and a cloak. Athena lent him beauty, head to foot. She made him taller, and massive too, with crisping hair in curls like petals of wild hyacinth, but all red-golden. 
Think of gold infused on silver by a craftsman, whose fine art Hephaestus taught him, or Athena, one whose work moves to delight. Just so she lavished beauty over Odysseus's head and shoulders. He sat then in the same chair by the pillar facing his silent wife, and said, Strange woman, the immortals of Olympus made you hard, harder than any. Who else in the world would keep aloof as you do from her husband if he returned to her from years of trouble cast on his own land in the twentieth year? Nurse, make up a bed for me to sleep on. Her heart is iron in her breast. Penelope spoke to Odysseus now. She said, Strange man, if man you are, this is no pride on my part, nor scorn for you, not even wonder merely. I know so well how you, how he, appeared boarding the ship for Troy. But all the same, make up his bed for him, Eurycleia. Place it outside the bedchamber my lord built with his own hands. Pile the big bed with fleeces, rugs, and sheets of purest linen. With this, she tried him to the breaking point, and he turned on her in a flash, raging. Woman, by heaven you've stung me now. Who dared to move my bed? No builder had the skill for that unless a god came down to turn the trick. No mortal in his best days could budget with a crowbar. There is our pact and pledge, our secret sign built into that bed. My handiwork and no one else's. An old trunk of olive grew like a pillar on the building plot, and I laid out our bedroom round that tree, lined up the stone walls, built the walls and roof, gave it a doorway and smooth fitting doors. Then I locked off the silvery leaves and branches, hewed and shaped that stump from the roots up into a bedpost, drilled it, let it serve as model for the rest. I planed them all, inlaid them all with silver, gold, and ivory, and stretched a bed between, a pliant web of oxhide thongs dyed crimson. There's our sign, I know no more. Could someone else's hand have sawn that trunk and dragged the frame away? Their secret. As she heard it told, her knees grew tremulous and weak. Her heart failed her. With eyes brimming tears, she ran to him, throwing her arms around his neck and kissed him, murmuring, Do not rage at me, Odysseus. No one ever matched your caution. Think what difficulty the gods gave. They denied us life together in our prime and flowering years, kept us from crossing into age together. Forgive me. Don't be angry. I could not welcome you with love on sight. I armed myself long ago against the frauds of men, impostors who might come, and all those many whose underhanded ways bring evil on. But here and now, what sign could be so clear as this of our own bed? No other man has ever laid eyes on it. Only my own slave, Acturus, that my father sent with me as a gift, she kept our door. You make my stiff heart know that I am yours. Now from his breast into his eyes the ache of longing mounted, and he wept at last, his dear wife clear and faithful in his arms, longed for as the sun-warmed earth is longed for by a swimmer, spent in rough water where his ship went down under Poseidon's blows, gale winds, and tons of sea. Few men can keep alive through a big surf to crawl, clotted with brine on kindly beaches in joy, in joy, knowing the abyss behind. And so she too rejoiced, her gaze upon her husband, her white arms round him pressed, as though forever. The Ending Odysseus is reunited with his father. 
Athena commands that peace prevail between Odysseus and the relatives of the slain suitors. Odysseus has regained his family and his kingdom. All right, let's turn now and do a quick annotation of this final passage, uh, Penelope's test. Um, of course, the, the reality is that Penelope has to make sure that it is Odysseus, and so we're going to play a game. How do I find out if he's really my man? By the way, Calypso, the drop-dead gorgeous Victoria's Secret model Calypso, she comes to Odysseus and she says to him right before he leaves, why don't you stay with me, and because I'm a goddess, I can make you young forever. And she says, I'll never age, so I'll always be stunningly beautiful. What do you say? And Odysseus has this really famous line early in the Odyssey that will be played out here. He says it this way. He says, I would prefer to be with my wife Penelope as a mortal, and everything sags and bags. She's not beautiful anymore the way she was when she was young than to be with a goddess and be eternally young all my life because Penelope is the one I love. And so you get this sense that even though maybe he is messing around, the one that he loves is Penelope and so there he is. However, we're told that after he kills all the suitors and is cleaned up, that Penelope kind of treats him aloof, like she's not really that, yay, my man is home. She's testing him. And in fact, Odysseus will say as much, wow. She is a strange woman on page uh, 11, uh, 1111. Strange woman, he says, at line uh, 15, uh, 55. The immortals of Olympus made you hard, harder than any, right? Who else could keep aloof? She said, and then he says it. Hey, nurse, make my bed and I'll sleep somewhere else. To which Penelope says, yeah, she says, you're right. Um, you're a strange man. And then notice the last line on page 1111, if man you are. In other words, who are you? I would write this down. This has been one of the premier questions of the Odyssey. Who is Odysseus? Like, who is he? Remember, the Cyclops asked him and he told him, yeah, I'm nobody. And then he got called nobody, remember, for the entire story. Every time Odysseus ends up in some kind of situation, it's always the question, who are you? Are you an old man who can string a bow? That is to say, no. Right? I'm Odysseus. So here it is. She's like, who are you? Right? Then she insults him by saying, we'll make up his bed out in the hall. And immediately Odysseus shows his rage, and he is like, no way. Now this bed, of course, is a primary symbol at 2B. No question. The symbol that only they have shared. And what is it that he says? I built this castle, but I built it around a tree, a huge tree. And I built our bed all the way around that tree so that there is no way anybody could move our bed. The bed, of course, built out of the tree, has all kinds of implications. It's strong. It's, of course, suggesting that their marriage is built on fidelity and strength. He'll call her in a little bit faithful. There's always debate about whether Odysseus chose to be unfaithful with his uh, you know, on, on Penelope and mess around or not, you see, and we'll, I'll let you guys debate that one. She will say it, She's, um, um, she says, oh, well, uh, the poet tells us on page 1112, last few lines, their secret, right? And then all of a sudden she realizes it. For 20 years she's been waiting for this moment, obviously a very cinemagraphic kind of moment, right, when you could be like, oh, he's finally, finally back. And she, and she says, don't rage against me, Odysseus. No one ever matched your caution. In other words, she says, I wanted to be careful. Think what difficulties the gods gave. Here's what the gods gave us. She said, suffering. What is it that they really had? Now, this is interesting because we're at the end of the Odyssey. And even though we just read a little bit of this, we know that Odysseus went through some seriously bad stuff. Scylla and Charybdis and all the other stuff. Dude, he even went to Hades. And he, but here's what she said was the true suffering. Look at it. She says, the gods denied us, line 1600, the gods denied us life together in our prime and flowing years, kept us from crossing into age together. In other words, the thing that's most sad, she says, is that in the most important years of our life, when Telemachus was growing up, when we were both aging, we had to do it apart from each other. Let's put it in our notes. This reminds us that while Odysseus had an odyssey, his wife Penelope also had an odyssey. She had to live for 20 years without him. She had to raise her son, Telemachus, without him and his help. 
Of course, as well, Telemachus has his Odyssey, no question in the Odyssey, culminating, of course, with helping his fathers get rid of the, uh, you know, um, the suitors. She says, I armed myself long ago against the frauds of men, impostors who might come, and all those many whose underhanded ways bring evil on. In other words, she says, I've had to be suspicious all my life. I've had to be guarded all my life. But now you get the sense that she's able to say, I am yours means I don't have to be guarded anymore. And now we're told finally at the top of 1114, from his breast into his eyes, the ache of longing mounted, and we're told Odysseus wept. Now in your senior year, when you actually studied the Odyssey with me, and we read it in its entirety, when we meet Odysseus for the first time, we won't meet him until book five of, of, of the Odyssey. The first four books of the Odyssey, we, don't, we, we hear about Odysseus, we don't meet him. When we finally meet him, he's on the island of Calypso, sitting out on a rock looking towards Ithaca, and he's crying. A few, bit, a few minutes later, when he sails away and Poseidon tries to drown him, he's crying. We hear Odysseus crying several times here finally to end the Odyssey. He weeps as well, only of course these are tears of joy, right? He's with his girl finally. Notice, he says it, his dear wife, notice it's a little interesting parenthetic, clear and faithful. In other words, she didn't mess around on him, even, even though obviously... He messed around on her. And then there's an interesting epic simile that finishes this one. He said, uh, we're told, and in his arms for, as the sun-warmed earth is longed for by a swimmer, we know all about this because Odysseus several times is going gonna, gonna to drown in the middle of the ocean, spin in rough water where his ship went down under Poseidon's blows. We know who that is, obviously, Odysseus. Gale winds and tons of sea. Few men can keep alive through a big surf to crawl, clotted with brine or kindly beaches enjoy, enjoy knowing the abyss behind. In other words, there's nothing like being stuck in the ocean and drowning and then being able to finally wash up on a beach and be alive. That is true joy. So she, too, rejoiced, her gaze upon her husband, her white arms round and pressed as though forever. And then finally to the end of the Odyssey, well, Socr uh, uh, Odysseus has killed a whole bunch of these suitors and their families are none too pleased. The Odyssey, write it down, the Odyssey ends actually with civil war or the potential for civil war because the families of the suitors are really, really hot. They're going to they're fight against Odysseus. They're going to destroy him. Athena will speak down from heaven and say, enough. No more civil war. No more fighting. And then Ithaca is returned and restored. Leaving us finally with one last comment. The Greeks love this hero, Odysseus, so much. They never invented an aging and death narrative for him. Achilles, we know how he dies. He got jacked in the ankle by Paris and Apollo, god of, uh, of, of the arch. Okay. Um, Agamemnon, we know how he died. He came home and his wife Clytemnestra showed him what an axe can do to a spine. And on and on and on it goes. But we do not know what happened to Odysseus. The Greeks never touched Odysseus and his death narrative it's almost like they loved him too much. They didn't want to imagine what it was like for a major hero to finally die. And yet, put it in your notes, through the course of Western literature, lots and lots of writers have picked up and tried to imagine Odysseus is old. The most famous of those, let's mention two. One, Odysseus ends up in Dante's Inferno in the Divine Comedy, a text we'll study in our senior year together. Two, Odysseus ends up as Ulysses, the Latin Roman name for Odysseus, in a famous poem by a poet named Tennyson. And in that poem, Ulysses, Odysseus as an old man will speak and we'll study that poem together in our senior year. So there you go, an introduction to uh, the Odyssey. Of course, I'm hoping that you'll pick the epic up and read it all on your own. Thank you.